I am an average 15 years old girl. I'm not a typical teenager. First of all, I am a girl. Because when you're 15, and when you're a girl, since birth you've got the whole world telling you what to do and what not to do because of your gender. Adults tell you, be modest, you are a girl. The society tells you, you are not going to achieve it. It's too difficult for a woman. You belong to kitchen because you are a girl. And the school tells you, stop wearing sleeveless shirts, cover your shoulders, you dress like a slut when it's 30 degrees outside. But all of these rules aren't related to body genders. The school doesn't tell boys stop wearing shirts because everyone can see their legs. They can go topless, and the society doesn't tell them that making sandwiches and looking after children is their purpose because you are a boy. I didn't understand why we girls are the ones that have to cover up. Why our schools tell us that we are causing a problem and taking away from education of others. So I grew up with an understanding that I don't want to see this future as it is supposed to be in our society just because you are a girl. But can you imagine the uncles believe that they must spend their life ironing their husband's shirts and raising children? Some of my friends believe that a marriage, housekeeping, is what we were born for. These girls don't see any other ways of life because they were brought up with the label that they are girls and they play their lives with no limitations. Let's imagine one of these girls will grow up. She'll become a beautiful woman, striving for perfection, because her patriarchal family made her understand that she should be perfect to be valued. She'll get married in her early 20s. She won't have time for her career and the family will be the most important for her. But it won't be so for her husband. He'll cheat on her and he won't value her. And only at the age of 40, this little girl in her soul will realize that she doesn't deserve it and she sh it, it shouldn't be like that. I know what I'm talking about. How the same thing happened to my dearest person in the entire world. My mother. My mom's story is a typical story of a woman who has become hostage to a patriarchal system. But the question is, will our generation continue it in the future or not? It isn't addressed to girls only, because dear men and boys, believe me, you also have plenty of reasons to support gender equality and be against patriarchy. Patriarchy. The system that is supposed to benefit men, where they dominate, they hold high positions, they are more respected, they have more influence on women and children, they are more powerful. But here are the downsides. To get all of these privileges, you have to be an ideal man. He is strong, white, ignorant, cruel, never feminine, heterosexual, and unemotional. It is this kind of man that patriarchy benefits. But we all understand that the likelihood of anyone actually meeting all of those standards is almost impossible. So basically, the patriarchy will fail you because you will fail the patriarchy. Because of it, you can't call the police and say that you are the victim of abuse, sexual assault, or violence. No one will do anything with it, because if you were a victim, it was your own fault for not being manly enough. Because of it, little men, boys and teenagers are told to hide emotions and not to cry. On the converse, women who express their emotions tend to live lonely lives and we in four times as likely to end our lives with suicides. Because of it, you are forced to take arms and fight. Just go to any Veterans Administration hospital and spend one day talking to the patients. There you will find broken people. And the majority of them end their lives equal to gutter soldiers 
suicide victims, coal miners, drug addicts and whiners. Then come back and tell me that the patriarchy favors men. We all know that about two and six million years ago, survival was the only priority. Biologically, men tend to be bigger and stronger than women. That's why men battled mammals to get food while women were nurturing and doing the housework. That's just the way it was. It's understandable that there was no necessity in teaching girls or giving them more rights because they were stuck in case where they were pregnant for much of their short lives. So it was quite logically to educate men, given that they required special skills for protecting the whole tribe. And there the patriarchy worked incredibly. And it was an amazing solution two and six million years ago because every single thing depended on your physical power where we women left behind. So men were the one in church and women and children were protected by them. The only remark is that it was two and six million years ago. With our new deceit, our humanity was developing more and more, and we were being convinced that our bodies are as humans' greatest trait. So due to developing industries where social, linguistic, and not only physical skills were involved, it was quite logical to give us, women, more rights. But they didn't. And over the time, the patriarchy went from being a simple necessity to being a tradition. Men obtained their power and they were reluctant to share it. It was still assumed that women were mostly involved in raising children and cooking. That was all we could do. Loss of rural succession passed the crown from male to male, skipping from male children. Then the clergy started to assert that gender inequality was God's wish. And suddenly it became heresy for women to do things that men did. We didn't fight. We kept silence. We tried to get to empowerment in a peaceful way. And as a result, you can't open history books and see female geniuses there. They were raped. They were forced to bear a child after child. They were kept trapped at home and they were economically dependent. We couldn't do music. We were forced to be wives instead. That's why we see Mozart's sister instead of Anna Maria Mozart who was forced to get married by her father's order. We couldn't do physics because it was counted as heresy. That's why I was in touch about Albert Einstein's first wife, Milva Marika School, who was collaborating with him. It is one of the biggest strategies of our mankind. We lost all of the female geniuses who were never allowed to reach their potential and contribute their gifts to the world. Now let's move into 19th century. In France, Napoleon becomes emperor and with him comes the Napoleonic court. And this set of laws basically defines women as minors for life. According to it, I don't have the right to vote, to own land, to make decisions for my children. I'm obliged to live with my husband and moreover, he has to take decisions about my life. Women were counted as property, as slaves, animals and lands property of their fathers, brothers, uncles, and eventually husbands. It was legal and sometimes even encouraged for a husband to physically assault his wife. Tell me, if you'd rather be a man or a woman at those times? You might think that it was many years ago and everything has changed. Now let's move into 21st century. Saudi Arabia Human Rights Report in 2010. By law, a female raped victim is punished along with the rapist. The testimony of one man equals two women's testimonies. Women can take care of children if they don't live with men. And the most fascinating, every woman is supposed to have a guardian male with the authority to approve her decisions and actions. Incredible. We continue doing the thing that we were doing two and six million years ago. But the reason of it at that time was biology. And the reason of it today 
is just a sexist tradition. But ideas show the idea of women who can't make decisions even about their lives without someone. Patriarchy believes that women need, or indeed want, to be protected and taken care of. But what about the women who have no interest in doing that? What about the women who feel oppressed by men telling her what to do and what not to do? What about the women who do not need protecting? I defend, provide for, and take care of my pets. I take them to the vet and make sure they stay in the house where they are safe. I get to make the decision because I'm bigger and stronger. I believe I'm right in getting the decision because I'm smarter and wiser than they are. Do you see where I'm heading with this? By assuming that women need to be protected and controlled, you're making the assumption that women are less than men. Because you are the one who knows what is good for me. I don't. As a teenage girl, I confirm that it impacts my life. Probably you don't really see it. Everything is just normal as it should be. And you don't understand why anyone would complain. You walk home alone at night, thinking about your next one project or whatever. Not about how to not get raped. Every single day we are told to cover up, we are free to enter leads with men, we are told not to talk to strangers, we are told to not to walk alone at night. You may say we hear that because the society wants to protect us. But maybe the problem isn't in our clothes and behavior. If lesbians can control themselves when girls are wearing rippling clothes but men can't, then do you really think that the problem is in clothes? Maybe we just shouldn't find excuses, accept problems and blame victims. Maybe we should fight against this injustice. Because we all know that there are no excuses for rapists. Let's continue fighting for the world where every person will be treated equally by the laws, by government, by businesses, where everyone will be judged as individuals, not as genders or sexes or by your race and sexuality. This is what feminism is about. If you support my ideology, you are a feminist. Let's be feminists. Let's build a society where neither men nor women, homosexual nor heterosexual, black nor white, dominate over the other. We must never accept the world we love. We must always fight for a better tomorrow. We can't stop now and in the past thousands of suffragists give their lives for my and our girls' rights today. Women spoke, even if they wanted to silence them. They got together, even if they wanted to separate them. They fought for our rights today, even if they wanted to make them conform to the past. They got the right to vote, the right to wear jeans and miniskirts, the rights to equal pay, the right to be considered as a person in the eyes of the law and the right to best control. Of course, conservative men fought tooth and nail against changes. They declared best control unnatural and ungodly. It was adventurous for them, but they didn't retreat and they got it. So are we supposed to stop now? There is still a long road ahead. And we will continue fighting for our future that no one will ever be able to say again that our daughters are less than our sons and our sons are less than our daughters. So dear men and women, fighting for gender equality isn't a personal propaganda against you. When we're talking about men, we are not talking about you. We aren't calling you a rapist. We have nothing personal against anyone. Our goal is to build a system where people will be able to live free of the stigma and gender roles. And when we, feminists, say that we want equal rights, we aren't talking about reducing men's rights. We aren't going to build a new matriarchal world 
it isn't a solution. Yeah, you can support the patriarchy. Neither do I, because it's too big for any person or even a group of people. But we can cheap our way it is. Every time a girl in a village in Yemen persists in going to school, little cheap is taken out of the patriarchy. Every time a woman runs for prime minister or president of her country, graduates from an elite university, writes a book, discovers a proof, is quoted as an authority at the news media, or successfully attains any other achievements formerly believed to be at the province of men, another little chip is taken out too. Every time a mother raises a child who believes that both genders have equal skills and abilities, another little chip is taken out too. A little chip is taken out too. And every time a gay child comes to his or her parents and is greeted with love and acceptance, or every time you make people understand they cannot disagree with someone's gender identity or sexuality, another little sheep is taken out too. The key thing is to know that we are part of a multi-generational process that leads to a better world for women as well as men. The patriarchy is a burden for everyone. Every cheap out of it makes our world a better place. Thank you.